Okay, welcome. This is for the Architectural 3 students, the ones who are doing commercial architecture. Um, what I have here is um, probably not the file that I actually need, but it will work for what we're going to do here. You, uh, this is the Draper Bank project, and what you're seeing here is the site plan. Now, the reason I'm not having you just delete and only take certain sheets is a lot of these files will have two-dimensional details that can be used for your final project. For example, up here is this detail um, that has a lot to do with a concrete bumper as well as the gutter and the sidewalk. So um, this is a, a good example of how to keep water off your site. Um, it's still applicable. We have another curb and gutter system here, a little bit different style. This is more in the parking area. Asphalt is over here for the road. Those will still be applicable to your project, even though you're remodeling because it will be damaged to those site elements, and you'll need to rematch what's going on there. So that is why we are um, letting you see all this. Now, what you're going to be doing is um, not terribly uh, complicated this first week. Um, in fact, it's uh, pretty quite simple. I'm going to take and download a file. You're going to have to download all of them in order to use them because you cannot open a, an AutoCAD file in uh, Google Drive. So you'll download them. Some of these projects have a lot of drawings. Some have just a few. Um, but you don't want to get familiar with those. So you'll download the files. You will not, at this point, need things like mechanical, plumbing, uh, structurals. Uh, those you can probably wait. The title sheet, there's a T-sheet. Um, this had a wet study done on it. Uh, it had a pretty swampy site when it started. This is a furniture plan. So really you're looking at these really first 10 sheets, architectural sheets on the Draper Bank project. Uh, but you then download those because you need to get familiar with the entire project. Most of what we do when we do a model is a lot of research at first. You've got to get a feel for what you can do. If you just take the floor plan without the site plan, you are putting yourself into a lot of extra work because you'll have to rebuild the site plan for that property. And in some cases, that can take um, a couple of days to get the research from the county in order to do that. So that's why I've given you everything. Um, so this is the architecture plan. When you get them downloaded and you want to download them to, if you're at home, download them to your personal drive in a folder where you can keep track of everything. Here at the school, you'll download them to your M drive. That's the drive that has your student number. So you gotta, gotta keep things organized or you're gonna get really confused. You wanna keep your downloaded folders, the originals separate from your remodeling. In case you make a mistake or you need something brought back, once you've uh, erased something and then you save it, there's no way to recover that. So you go back to the original in order to pull those things forward and remerge files together. So it's really important you, you commit to being um, organized uh, in your files and in your process. Okay, so this is the site plan. Uh, obviously, I may you can check out the trees at some point, depending on what you want to do. You will want to bring those in in Revit so they're three-dimensional. This gives you an idea of where to put those trees because at this point, they have reached full maturity, which means they're full height. And so that will have a lot to do with the way you look at uh, your finished project. Uh, you may not want to change the parking. You may want to change the parking. Uh, so be aware of what you're looking at. I'm going to open up um, the second sheet here, which is a little bit more to what we need, um, and at least get me started on what we're looking at. So what this sheet is here is a more elaborate site plan. Uh, this site plan goes into all the utilities. It's still not the main floor plan, but it gives you an idea of what you're going to do. And um, so I've got a lot of information here that I... It is just too much for me to make a good analysis. I've got all this text, which is great because I need to know what it is. I need to know this is an underground electrical line. I want to be aware of that because if you do an addition to your building in this area, you need to know that there's power lines there and uh, that you got to get that taken care of first. So you would have a note, let's say something about relocate existing underground power line 
so that you don't cause a blackout or worse, a fire. Now, what you're really doing on these, and I might as well just do this um, as correctly for you as I can. Um, I'll just keep downloading folders as we go through. And um, you just have to download them and get familiar with them. You are really going to have to do that. And it's going to take you some time. Um, you're not going to really enjoy it a whole lot, but you you need to look at what all is here. Uh, we've got a sidewalk detail. Here's a curb detail. Here's a handicap access ramp. That is so required on every commercial building now. And this gives you everything you need in there. Here's how you do a new tree staking. You have to make sure that tree grows straight. If you just plant out there in the lot um, without the proper staking, you have a tree leaning over, and then you're going to be asked to replace it. If it's not in your drawings and that tree doesn't survive the first seven years, um, that can come back on the designer. So you want to really make sure you're covering yourself on all of that. Hope that sheet I just downloaded. All right, now here we go. This is, um, and you can look at the floor, uh, the title block will tell you. This is a floor plan and a large restroom plan and the interior elevations. Uh, these are my initials here. This is a drawing I've worked on uh, back in 1995. So it is definitely due for a model. Here's a brick detail, the outer brick and the wood framing to make that profile happen. Cabinet details for the bank. So here's where I'm at, and I need to know what I can do with this space. Uh, what you want to do is now, whatever project with the four you choose, you have to get familiar with it. And the easiest way to do that is open up your layers, and that's Layer Properties dialog box. It's going to bring up a nice little uh, window. It's going to pop out. And there are all of the different layers on here. Well, the text layer is current right now. And I look, and there's a wall layer. It says new walls. This means that this project was remodeled in 95. So it is on its second life already. I'm just going to make that my current layer by double-clicking in the parallelogram. And then I'm going to start turning the light bulb off. So the tile here, um, there's a tile line in here where the tile changes to carpet. I'm turning that off, not going to be a part of my remodel. So let me just turn that off. I don't need all this text right now. Things are starting to look a little better. I can probably live without the plumbing at this point. I'm looking to see if anything is. Um, this is the plumbing, so I'm going to probably leave that on. Uh, the millwork, uh, I see that it's yellow. That are all of these tel teller cabinets. Now, in this case, um, you don't want to delete anything. But um, these will all have to be de demolished, and you're going to have to create a demolition plan for what things you are going to have removed. And in order to do that, you've got to have a grasp on what you have and where you're going. So I'm going to leave that. The hatch is no longer appropriate uh, or applicable, so I'll take that off. I don't need to see my elevations. Uh, either of those. Oops, that was a little more information. Yep, I don't need any of that. Um, the door swings and the leave. Um, these three layers here, the death points, A shade, and zero. Zero, you cannot delete. You can't, but you can turn it off in case someone's there. Oh, there's a mistake on this drawing. All of the existing in, is on this zero layer. So I'm going to need to keep that. The A shade layer, if I click that, has something on there, Oops. but nothing that is too critical. And like with the depth points, these are usually hold as temporary placeholders. So now I've got uh, at least thinned out to what's going on in my plan. Uh, there's some things around here that are probably on wrong layers. Like saying this was an exploded hatch, always a bad thing. Uh, this is um, a plumbing element, so, but I'm just gonna leave that where it is. Now, this is the enlarged plan. It has to do with the restroom because they're ADA compliant. We have to do a lot of extra work on those. I'm not, that's not what I'm worried about right now. I am worried about this. This is my project. So now that I can look at it, I've got a vestibule, double doors coming in here. There's a couple of offices. Looks like this might be a break room since there's a sink. This is um, the vault. Uh, this is actually where all the safety deposit boxes are. Notice big thick walls on there. So these are public accessible. 
this back pat back area here would be accessible only to um, bank employees. We have restrooms. Notice they are not really public restrooms. So if you turn, change the use of this building from a bank to something else, you may have to make uh, some way access here. Uh, this is the drought teller areas, and this is the normal ter tellers. And then this is the bypass through here. So we get through this most likely the bank managers um, area, and then this would be training or something along those lines. Now, if I bring the text back on, I can see what that room is. This is just storage operations. So you can see the room names. You might wanna look at keeping those a little bit to keep yourself familiarized. What you're going to want to do now is that you have this, we're gonna to need to get it to where you can start making a new plan. What do you want this space to become? In other words, do you want it to be a restaurant? Do you want it to be a rec center? Is it a juice bar? Is it a dance hall? Is it a, a new type of office configuration? Is it an internet cafe? Is it, you know, what are you going to make it into that is not what it is? So it has to become something new that you're going to use the shell, the perimeter, and you can do an addition to it if there's enough property there for that. Um, for instance, on this, if we take out the drive up teller lines, you can extend the size of this building up to where that teller line is. The staff dotted line is the current roof. So that is the envelope of where I can build. If I were to just draw a rectangle on here so you can see that, that means that my drawing area is in this here. That could be my building size is within this nice, pretty green area here that I have. And um, that's got a good line weight to it. Let me pop that up so you can see it. We'll do something like that. So this is the area that I can build to. That gives me a little bit of room to change the shape while I'm working out that function. So this is your assignment for this next week. Figure out what you're gonna do with the space you've selected. You will have to do lots of different sketching. You have to do some internet research to find out what's needed in the type of building you're doing. If you have questions, by all means, please give me a call or send me an email and let's have a good time building this. Hopefully this helps. Have a great weekend. We'll see you all next week.